I am the founder of a near to six figure hair accessories business and in this video I'm going to share with you exactly how I got here. On this channel I share advice on how you can start your own business but I thought it's only right to show you how I started mine. My business is oh so curly and I started the business in 2014 and I created a reversible satin pillowcase. To sit back relax because this journey has not been easy is a story full of twists and turns ups and downs but ultimately I'm still standing the business is still here and I really hope this video inspires you to start or to keep going with your own journey so I'll just touch a bit on where I was at the time when I started my business so I had recently graduated from university I studied film and television and I did media production at the Brit School of Performing Arts I wanted to get into like the TV industry mainly like my dream idea of a job would be to work for MTV because I loved music. I actually got an internship at MTV thanks to my friend putting in a word there and I hated it. I was so shocked like so like my dream job was something that I didn't enjoy at all so that really shocked me and made me think about my decisions in life and what I was gonna do moving forward. So after all of these internships, many work experience, I worked for Top Boy when they were filming their first series, Take Me Out, and loads of other productions as like an intern or a runner, but none of them led to full-time paid roles. And at that time, my mum was not having it. She needed some money to go towards the rent. I always worked from the age of 17. After graduation, I didn't have a job, so it was time to find a new job. And I actually had to sign on at the job centre. And back then they had to give you that little book where you sign every single week and you tell them what you've been searching for. And with all my experience, even my degree, I couldn't get any job. The only job that they offered me and I got straight away was a job at Tesco Extra in Streatham. If you're from South London, you will know. I was working in the clothing department in FNF and I managed to transition to doing the night shifts because it was double pay. And I wasn't doing anything in the daytime anyway, so I thought I might as well just save my money and figure out what I'm going to do with my life. The idea for Oh So Curly and my personal brand, UK Curly Girl, my hair blog, came to me one evening on, I think it was the 14th of January or the 24th of January 2014 both of the ideas just came to me so I wrote it all down everything that you know was being told to me but I started the Instagram pages uh, the YouTube channel and I just didn't post anything yet that evening when I was walking up and down the Tesco aisle I decided that okay it's time to take action because I really can see there's actually nothing here on these shelves for me and I can't be the only one who feels like that. So that is when I decided to figure out how I was going to search for some products, how I was going to gain customers and really just get this thing up and running. So the first step was research. I needed to research the market. I needed to research what people are buying, how brands actually sell online, because I knew I wanted to do e-commerce, but I just wasn't really sure how people market their products. So what I did is I created the page on Instagram and I followed a whole bunch of curly girls, my target audience, and also brands that sell to those with curly hair. So of course, most of them were from the US and the marketing tactics back then was to post on your page about the target audience subject that they're interested in. So Oh So Curly started out as like an inspo page. I would just post curly girls daily, tag them in the posts, and that's how I started to gain a audience and attraction. Because I was already blogging on my own page, UK Curly Girl, I began to understand my audience. I started to understand what their needs were, what they like, what they don't like. So that really, really helped me in the journey of starting my business. But I didn't actually share that I was the person behind Oh So Curly for quite a long time because I wanted to start it organically and I didn't want to share something that, you know, wasn't going to continue or that wasn't good enough yet. The page started to grow, but I just needed to figure out what I was going to sell. I thought the best thing to do to test out my audience would be to create merch. I saw that beanies were really popular at that time. 
even walking back and forth to work when I was doing my internship at MTV in Camden, there were so many stores selling beanies that said like really simple slogans that were like popping at the time. And I thought, okay, we could do one that says curly. So that was my first ever product. I had to search where to find beanies, how to get them customized. And I came across a website called Alibaba. Now, you know, I've spoken about Alibaba multiple times on my channel, and you know that you have to buy things in bulk. So this was quite a risk for me. So the first thing I did was just simply draw out the design. It was so basic. Like <laughs> I cringe so much looking back at this hat, but people love it and they still ask for it. So I think I will try and do an updated version, but the design for me just wasn't the greatest, but people liked it. So, I mean, it's up to them. <laughs> so I just created a really simple logo, just curly with like a wavy font. I got a sample made from the supplier that I liked. I decided to go ahead with them, but obviously I didn't have the funds to do the bulk payment. So because I was completely new to starting a business and back in the day, there was hardly any advice. You're so lucky because even on my channel, I share with you exactly how to start a business from scratch. But back then there was nothing on YouTube, especially for people in the UK. So I had to figure it out all by myself. And I came across the Prince's Trust and they have this enterprise program. It's for a few weeks and within that program, they teach you exactly how to start a business, all of the legal things that you need to do how to produce a product, how to market it. And I learned so much from that enterprise course. And then at the end of the course, they offer you a loan. So I took out a £1,000 loan. And I'll never forget, guys, before you get your loan, you have to kind of like pitch to a business mentor. And this woman was so rude. And just she did she just didn't believe in the whole curly hair leak. She did not understand it at all. She was an older white woman, straight hair, of course. And she was just looking at me like, I don't see how there's a market for this. I really don't see what the point is or how it's gonna work. But what about people with straight hair? They're not gonna be able to wear it. I see the vision and I see how this industry, this whole community is so large in the US and it was beginning to really grow here in the UK. So I didn't let that discourage me. I just knew that she was wrong and I wish that she could see how the community, well, I'm sure she sees how it has grown now and it's like mainstream here in the UK. So they gave me the loan, the £1,000 loan, and I used that money to purchase, I think it was about 100 hats, 100 beanies that I bought. Then they arrived and I had this big box in my mum's home, in the living room, and it was like, okay, now we need to get selling them. Simply just took the pictures on my phone at that time. I don't think I had a camera. I might have had like a Canon, I think it was like my boyfriend at the time's camera that I used to borrow. So I think I might have used that to take some pictures. And then I used Big Cartel, which was free at the time to sell the hat. So I started to promote it here and there on the Instagram page. And I don't think I got any sales. I think I got my first ever organic sale on Christmas day. And I remember that so clearly. It was on Christmas Day and I was just so excited that I got a sale through the website. And then I didn't get another sale for a long time after that as well. But what I did do is I started to market it in person. So I would wear the beanie and I would go to hair events. I would go to work even and I'd wear it. My first customers were actually my, obviously my mom, I think probably was the first customer. But then also it was my work colleagues. So I used to go to Tesco and do the night shift. And a lot of even like the guys, because it was just black and said curly, even some of the guys bought them and then people would buy it for their girlfriends or sisters, friends or family. So those were my first sales. And I think that's the best way to really start a business and test out a business, seeing how friends, you know, colleagues react to something and hopefully they support you. So that was really cool. That's how it first really started. So I knew Oh So Curly was going to be something way bigger than just a merch line. As the page on Instagram started to grow, as my personal brand UK Curly was growing, 
Pearly Girl was growing, I was working more with brands, I was gaining experience in the industry, I was gaining more contacts, I was networking with influencers, and knew that if I was to launch something innovative and new, that I have a big audience and a big chance that the influencers that I know would help me to promote the product. I brainstormed some of the accessories that really changed my hair's life. And I realized that, okay, a satin pillowcase really did have the most impact on my hair's health. So I decided to put a twist on a satin pillowcase and make one that was stretchy, that fit around your pillow tightly because I found a lot of them like slipped out. They were too big. A lot of them were just very plain in color as well. So I decided to do one that was one color on one side and then white on the other side. I think we even did like black and white, black and gold, black and pink at first. That's a whole other story. And then what I had to do was obviously find who was going to actually make it for me. No one had done it before. It wasn't a product that was already on the market. I had to figure out how I was going to create it. So what I did is I got really resourceful. I went to Tutin, where there is a large Asian community. Um, if you know Southwest London, you'll know there's like Tutin Beck. Walking up from Tutin to Tutin Beck, there are a lot of Asian stores where they sell fabric for, you know, their saris and their scarves and stuff. So I went in there, I found any satin that I could find, and then I stapled two pieces together to make like the prototype of what I wanted so that I could show a seamstress how to make it. So then I had to find a seamstress and I basically used Gumtree. I searched up seamstress in the local area, satin, and I tested out a lot of people. I went into, even in like Norbury, there was a few stores where people sold fabric or were like tailors and a lot of them said they couldn't do it. I even wanted to put satin within the beanie Everyone told me it's not possible, I can't do it, can't do it. And now look, they're everywhere, everyone can do it. So that was another struggle that I had in the beginning. So once I got my seamstress through Gumtree, I got her to do a sample and then I'd meet up with her in person. We discuss what I don't like about it, what I want changed. And then once we got the final one done, I just started to order a few here and there. And then whenever people ordered, I would then order one from her. And then it was time to start marketing it and I would do content using the pillowcase. I did a photo shoot with the pillowcase and with some models, started to give it out to influencers and people in hopes that they would post it. And it started to gain a little bit of a buzz. So by now I was super consistent with my social media. I was posting pretty much daily. We were gaining organic sales and organic customers. So it was time for me to move from Big Cartel to Squarespace because I was getting regular orders at this point. I also was getting regular orders that it wasn't possible for my seamstress to keep up with the orders. So I had to find another seamstress who was able to do about five to 10 at a time. But this person was so far away. I had to walk, I had to get the tram and then I had to get a train and then I had to walk. That is dedication, guys. Just to pick up the pillowcases from her and then when I got home, I would then have to head to the post office, package them and send them off to the customer. That was a lot of work. The next step of progression was finding a manufacturer that can make way more pillowcases at a lower price. By then, we'd also introduce bonnets as well. So I needed someone who could provide all of these products and hopefully can help me create more products in the future. I don't know how I found my company. I wish I had like recorded everything down and I highly recommend you do this too. I found a manufacturer that was outside of London. So I had to like get a coach up to them. I still work with them now to this day. As soon as I met them, they're a family run business. I saw the factory, I saw their workers, it all looked very clean and good and legit and they decided that they wanted to take me on. I was just a young female, a black female and I don't know, maybe they saw something in me. I know that I just didn't know what I was talking about at the time but I had the determination and I really wanted it to work. Fast forward now to 2018 and this is the year that changed everything for me. I found that at this point I was really not happy with my life, my income, how the business was going. It was it was growing but it was stagnant and I really wanted to make a big change. Something had to give. And that is when I started to look online on YouTube for like motivation. And I came across 
the secret I'd read it before but I started to like dive into that manifestation Eric Thomas motivational speakers I learned about the 5 a.m routine morning routine and this is what changed everything for me I found that I wasn't very motivated and I wasn't making the most of my days so I decided I was going to wake up early and I was going to be productive. And that is when everything changed for me. So I waking up at 5 a.m. and then I would head to the gym. And my day was so much better because I was energized. I was up and I was ready to go and work on my business as soon as I got home. Or I would go to like a Starbucks or a office space to work on my business. So this is when things really started to grow and I actually got my first wholesale orders. So from 2018 to 2020, we managed to grow by gaining retailers. We had some curly hair product stores online purchased from us. So that gave us a way to market to even more people that didn't even know about Oh So Curly. I then started to attend like fairs and stuff and sell in person. So that was helping to spread the word about the business. And then we did in 2019 a Black Friday sale. And guys, I'm going to put a picture here. This is when things really started to pick up. We had introduced at this point spray bottles and also a shampoo brush and the shampoo brush and spray bottles at that time did so well and I think it really just helped to boost our sales and at that time no one was really selling shampoo brushes so we were like one of the first to start selling the shampoo brush and I found that product just by looking on Instagram and I kept seeing an ad for this shampoo brush but in the adverts it was just like Asian men with straight hair using it and I realized, hold on, this would be really good for those with curly hair because you can use it for cleansing and for oil massages. So I decided to save up some money and invest in those and they sold like hotcakes. But at this time, although things were going well, I was having a lot of issues behind the scenes. Things looked great, but what you didn't know is behind the scenes, I wasn't really making any profit at all. My numbers weren't correct. I didn't know what I was doing. I was recording things, but I wasn't pricing my products correctly, which is why now I have a pricing calculator and I really explain to you guys how you can price your products to make a profit. So I was just pretty much going off what the price was of the product and then adding a bit extra on top, which wasn't covering all of my other expenses like packaging, shipping, labor. I wasn't incorporating any of that into the cost of my products. So although I was selling so much and like the pictures looked great, it was revealed to me that I just didn't have any money at the end of it. So we used to do like a dark gray and a black color pillowcase, but because this is for curly hair and those with Afro hair, we do have quite oily hair or we add oils and products to our hair. So that can cause the dye in the pillowcase to actually go onto people's pillows, on their sheets, on their walls. This to me was like the worst thing ever. I don't like to, you know, be the person that has caused someone problems. So that was really hurtful for me. And a big lesson I learned when it comes to customer service, when it comes to testing out products, because just because it works for me doesn't mean that someone else is going to do the same routine or use the product the same way that I have. So that set us back. But luckily, again, I pushed through and I came across business launchpad which is a similar initiative to the prince's trust but they were more local to south london and they had a pitch competition and within this program they actually for a few weeks trained you on how to pitch and then at the end you pitch to these judges and you could win money and i was so shocked that i actually won so i won the competition and i won some funding for my business and this funding allowed me to travel to Italy and try and find fabric at a more affordable price. This has always been a problem of mine and I'm still kind of going through it. But this is why our pricing is quite high because the fabric is such high quality, but it's quite expensive as well. But I am on the lookout for fabric at the same quality at a more affordable price. So. That is something I'm still working on right now. So it allowed me to go to Italy and it also allowed me to trade at Curlfest. And Curlfest, guys, we made 
I think nearly £2,000 in revenue on just that one day. That was like the most I had ever made in a day. So for me, that was like a huge achievement. And we also traded at the Black Business Show as well, which again, we gained sales from that too. And we also did a pop-up shop with Heritage, which was a store that we were stocked in as well. So all of these in-person markets were doing really well for us too. And then we were hit by 2020. And by 2020, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I, at the beginning of 2020, was like, yes, we crushed it last year. This year, I'm going to get my pricing right. I'm going to launch new products. And we're going to just take this to a whole new level. And luckily, with 2020, the support for small businesses was pouring in. The support for Black-owned businesses was pouring in. We had Black Pound Day, which was, I think it was the first Saturday or the last Saturday of every month. And that was bringing in a lot of sales because people were supporting black businesses only on that day. Our sales continued to grow. I think I'd made the most that we'd ever made in the business. Things were going great. I actually ended up moving into my own place. I had a two bed, so I had my own office and my bedroom. And I was just living the life, like the money was flowing in, everything was flowing in the sales. Black Friday 2020 was the best Black Friday I've ever had. I'll show you some pictures here too. We started to do lives, we started to post even more. I started to share more on YouTube about the business too. And my personal business, UK Curly Girl, was growing more. I was getting a lot of sponsorship deals and stuff. So things were going well, but that boom began to drop. So in 2021, sales dropped. I remember it. I think it was like January or February 2021 and the sales had dropped. I think the end of like the whole 2020 boom started to set in and people weren't shopping as much. People didn't have a lot of disposable income anymore. People weren't getting the grants that the government were giving out. We had taken out a bounce back loan as well. So Sales had gone down, which would have been okay if I didn't have so many expenses. Think about it now, guys. I'd invested in a lot of subscriptions to help the business grow. I was paying a friend to help me pack orders. I was paying someone to do our social media marketing. I was paying an editor to edit videos for me. And then everything started to go down again. However, if my expenses weren't increased, I probably would have survived, but you know, I just moved out. And in 2022, it got to the point where I couldn't handle it anymore. And then on top of that, I had a bereavement. Is that how you say it? A grief? grief? I went through a very tough grief. It's the first loss I had ever had in my life. And it's one of the closest losses you could ever have. Like, So that hit me. And when that hit me, that was like the tip of it. I was like, I was already struggling and done. And now I'm really done, done. Another thing that really hurt the business was that we had an American brand copy my reversible pillowcases. And I think it might have actually been the Alibaba suppliers because they saw how much I was selling and how well the pillowcase was doing. I think they actually started to copy my idea. I started to see the pillowcase on the sheen and all of these other websites online for so cheap, like I'm talking five to 10 pounds. That really began to hurt my business and hurt me personally as well. My faith wasn't that strong at that point. I had given my life to Christ in 2020, but my faith wasn't that strong. So I didn't know how to deal with it all and it really affected me. Literally guys, I would go to sleep on my satin pillowcase and even just the look, looking at the pillowcase would hurt me because I'm like, wow. I invented this and there's people worldwide that have no idea that I was the one that invented it. Not that all the glory has to go to me, but like I wish people would know to come to us to purchase it instead of these people. So that really hurt, but I pushed through. And then in last year, 2023, we relaunched with a new pillowcase. So we have now the pillowcase bonnet, which can be used as a bonnet for braids and also as a pillow. And ever since then, from last year to this year, sales have started to pick up more. We are starting to restore everything that I have lost. But this time around, things are different because I'm really leaning on God. I'm putting God first, seeking him first. 
and I'm just going with the flow. When things really pick up, I'm not going to just be so quick to do things, quick to spend on things. I'm really going to be able to steward the sales and the money better. So all in all, I hope this video inspires you. If you have any questions, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I left out in this video because it would be super long. If you have any further questions, leave them down below. And guys, if you want more detail on exactly how to start a business from scratch, I do have my guide, my ebook, which has over 30 pages of advice from start to finish and also has templates on bookkeeping, how to price your product and a checklist for starting your business. So I hope this video helped you and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.